Hey traders, this is Houston Trung from the TradingEdge.org. It is April the 11th, 2019, and the title of this video is Let's Do It Again Tomorrow, Shall We? And uh, it was not the best day ever, <laughs> let's just put it that way. It was actually a do-nothing day for the most part. Uh, if we take a look at the charts, we'll get into things, and we'll talk about today a couple of notable charts that I'll point out. We're going into Friday's session. And we'll talk about some interesting lessons and observations along the way. So if you just looked at where the markets closed today, you could conclude that nothing pretty much happened, right? So the SPY basically ended flat, so basically down six cents. Uh, Q's down 44 cents, less than a quarter, quarter percent down. Russell down 22 cents, less than 1.5% uh, or 0.15 percent down and the Dow basically only down 20 cents so less than 0.07 percent down but the VIX actually was down close to 2 percent and actually in the after hours here it's actually trading uh, about 2.3 percent down so you would have thought that with the VIX just, just kind of slowly eroding away you would have had equities just kind of flying but that was not the case in fact it was a lot odder than that because if you actually looked at uh, my basket of, of indices and instruments that I track, which some of them are actually inversely correlated, throughout most part of the trading day today, they were actually all in the red. So for instance, I track VIX, SPY, Q's, Russell, Dow, was watching UK oil or, or USO, XOP, OIH, was watching long bond TLT, was watching gold, GLD, watching EM, the Asian markets. And at some points and throughout the day, they were actually all red. So that's quite unusual because some of these uh, products usually trade kind of, some of them trade in an inverse correlation manner. And today they were all red. So it was definitely one of those uh, interesting days where um, it looked like something was gonna happen, but uh, in fact, nothing unfolded. And you could have told that, you could have seen that play out a number of ways. Before we get to that, which is one of the lessons, Let's quickly talk about some of the charts and some of the risks that were that were inherent in the charts today. So let's zoom in on the daily chart here on some of these indices. So look at Spider, right? So on Monday, we put in the high of the week so far. So I'm just going to zoom into the daily chart here. Monday, we had that strong open, that outside day that was put in on Monday, right there on the 8th. And then Tuesday was down. Here's Wednesday, Thursday. We came really close to taking out the high of Monday. So we opened up right at the highs here. And we basically sold right away. So, you know, it was really like 91, 91 was a cent here, 91 was the high here, and the high was 84. So it came seven cents to tapping that, but could not fill that, that uh, or, or fill that pivot, touch that pivot. So it came back in, and you know, this, this is uh, still quite bullish for a pattern because you're still trading above the weekly open, which is the uh, purple line and you're trading above the monthly open and the quarterly open, which is the orange line. So nowhere here will you, will you see any kind of reversal action happening on the SPY. Now on the Qs, you're, you're setting up something a little bit more dangerous. However, you know, not, it was definitely not indicating a major reversal. All I was looking at here was an outside inside, which popped to the upside yesterday, which you didn't want to see happen here. If you were a buyer or a bull, you did not want to see yesterday's low get taken out because that would be a type of inside bar reversal. A worst case scenario, because you opened up higher, was that it was gonna to turn to an outside day and it came very close, right? So the low here was uh, 184.69, the low here is 184.52. So it looked like, you know, uh, later, you know, at the uh, in the afternoon, it looked like it was gonna to turn to an outside day and maybe test these, uh, uh, you know, test these pivots here, which it did not. Now the Russell kind of hung a bit stronger but and this was able to complete this broad information that uh, that I just talked about. So we have this outside day down Wednesday, Thursday, and this thing took out that high that, that pivot high, which is what we were looking for to happen in the spy as well. So that creates this type of of situation here. So now you have that type of broad information being created on the daily chart. Okay. So it took that out now. Can it get up tomorrow on Friday? Can it can it break above that? The Dow was definitely the weakest for most of the day, and it really looked at various points, various points in the day that this thing could could break down, because it started off opening right in the range, and then um, it tapped a bit higher. Then it came down and actually took out this inside bar low. 
So it was an outside bar, all red to the downside, and then it kept selling to the point where it nearly triggered the weekly chart. So here in the weekly chart, you'll see that here's last week's low. So I'm, I'm talking about the top uh, on the bottom left hand corner, and I'll zoom into that there. So here's the low of the weekly chart. The low was or is 260.58. The low here, 260.58. So the, def the buyers defended exactly to the tick to keep this chart inside weak. So now what do you see here, right? So this is basically an inside week still going into Friday. This is why we have this tight choppy business. So here on the four hour chart on the left hand side, this is the entire week right now, right? It's kind of a broadening formation. You can see it's kind of broadening. You have a high here and a lower low there. And that's this high is higher than that high and that low is lower than that low there. So you have this little broadening formation and it's very tight and you're wedged between the weekly open right there and the monthly and quarterly open there. So you're trading this tight range. So with Friday tomorrow, how do you get out of that, right? Because it's Friday, you don't have much time or or um, if it gets into the in the afternoon session and you haven't broken out of this range yet, then it's possible now that we just simply chop in here for the rest of the week and that sets up next week for the potential to break this inside bar up or down, right? And we're not gonna predict which way that goes. We're simply gonna follow the price and let it tell us, let it dictate which way we're gonna trade and which way is going to be our bias? Because the nice thing is that if this, if this thing closes inside week this week, then next week it'll be a great signal next week, right? If it goes inside and up, that'll that'll make it a really good uh, opportunity to go to those all-time highs, which is only less than three percent away here. Or if it goes inside and down, you know there's a chance for it to come back through here again. This will be like an inside bar reversal coming back through. Well, it's not a reversal yet on the monthly, but it'll definitely give us a bit of range to at least fill this gap here because there's an unfilled gap on this uh, weekly bar right there. Okay, so right now, you know Dow is still inside weak. The rest of the indices they're not trading inside weak, but the ranges are really tight. You know we're pretty much sandwiched for the most part in between for, um, that monthly and weekly open. So if, if we're not inside that range, we're right around that, you know, that, that weekly open, and it's very, very tight. So it really hasn't moved much this week. So there's a lot of expectations this week while hitting those all-time highs. But look at the SPY here. It's a doji right now going into Friday. It's only moved, you know, it's down 0.12% for the week. And bonds aren't doing anything different, right? So this is just the reality of things that this is the, the type of rangy environment we're getting. This is why the trading is a little, little bit lackadaisical. Uh, the bonds here are trading with full time from alignment to, alignment to the downside. So we're below the quarterly and monthly open. There's your orange line. You're below the weekly open, purple line. But the thing is that you're still inside week here going into Friday. So does this thing finally break below last week's low? Or does it just sit inside this week for the rest of, uh, the, rest of the week, one more session, and just sit in here in this range for one more session and perhaps set up something bigger for next week. The issue with TLT here is that it's inside month. We had a really big month here in March. So how do you get out of this month or do you just chop around, right? And, and go nowhere, which is entirely possible. Look what TLT done, has done in the past here, when it's stuck in a big range, you can expect this type of action where it just sits there and consolidates for, uh, for months at a time. And that's possible. So. Let's, uh, although, you know, again, our, our, our target for TLT here, if it can continue to go down, is that pivot low here. This, this pivot low right there for that, uh, for that weekly, weekly chart. So let's go to some notable uh, and interesting lessons today. So VIX, we've, which we've been talking about for a while, and we prefaced this uh, right in the beginning, has been going down. The challenge with the VIX, and, and you know, this, this whole week, it's been kind of, uh, you know, two days ago, it tested that monthly open, came back in yesterday, today it gapped down. It has not been an easy ride down. In fact, today's VIX pace and tempo was very odd. It was uh, very staccato, and it was a little bit hard, frankly, to trade. I actually elected to not trade VIX at all today because I didn't like the staccato nature of VIX. So I'm gonna zoom in here to a lower time frame chart. Let's look at, say, the, the uh, let's look at the 15. It seems obvious, yeah. So here's a 15 minute chart, okay? So you gap down 
and it goes down, but it's very choppy to the downside. So if I zoom in even to a lower interval, this is, is, is just choppiness. It goes down, comes back up again, and outside bar, takes anyone out who tried to buy a break, down, goes down, moves it just a little bit, pops up again outside bar. And I was commenting in our members chat room that this staccato uh, tempo is is dangerous because look at the five minute chart, right? It's it's very staccato. So it goes down and then comes, comes all the way back up again, down, back up again, down, back up again. It's very staccato. It's, it's not smooth whatsoever. And the tempo is very odd. And so when you have this type of situation where you're going right in the lows like this, it's always dangerous because you have no, no pivots to trade against. The pivots that we talked about, like, you know, if you want to trade against something, they're all the way back here. So I have to zoom out significantly. I'll go to the, the 15 minute chart. You see, like the lows that we're trying to test here, go back, I, I have to go back to the, say like a, a monthly chart to see those. We're trying to go after this low here. This is the monthly chart. We're trying to go after October's lows now. So that's the pivot we're going after. And it, you know, there's a good chance that we get those, we get that because on a three month chart, it looks like this. It's outside, inside, and down. So outside bar, inside bar, and down now. That's the pivot you're going, going after. But you know, with the volatility at these levels, there's no guarantee it's going to be a smooth ride. You have to find a really good trade location and, and hang on. The issue here is that when you go right into lows, this is what happens, as I was commenting in the members room, that it would not take much once you start to, to you know hit these lows and you have no pivots, pivots to trade against for some news or any news to happen for things to basically break, you know, you know, for the buyers to take control. And so that's basically what happened. So, you know, right here, you have a reversal, and all it takes is one, two, three bars, and basically it's wiped out all your gains had you gone short from the, you know, from the day, from the, from the open, right? So three bars later, and basically if you had been short in the sequence, you either got stopped out or you, you give up all those gains. That's all it took to lose all the gains in, in uh, you know, from, 9.30 all the way to, let's say, call it, you know, 11.30, right? So two hours work, you raced in 15 minutes. So this is the kind of action that is not conducive to good trading. So I, I like to actually, you know, not trade in conditions like that. So the funny thing is that, you know, the spider was not faring any better. So with this um, slow bleed, you would expect that something like the spider or you know the spies would actually be trading up and they were not trading up today they were actually just again also very staccato kind of lackadaisical and, and today basically end of the day as a as an inside uh it's not inside bar but as a, as a doji so on the spider here you just have a situation where it just you know they they open it up here at 9 30 and they just sell it right away right inside bar and down they sell 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 and then finally the last hour of the day they do an inside bar reversal and they go and they take it higher. But you can see it's, it's very, very rangy. You can see in this in this area here, he's trading in one big range right now. And so that's the conditions that we're trading in is you, you have to watch out for that. And this is what pays pays to, to, to pay attention to these things. So the one thing to, to, you know, one thing to notable to look out for is that today we did see oil kind of act up. So oil's kind of been a smooth ride to the, the upside and it's been getting choppy now. So UK oil, the chart still looks really good on the daily chart. Um, but we, we now have a bit of volatility. So we had that outside bar here on Tuesday that went outside bar and up. Now inside bar, and this is the this is the, the tomorrow's chart. So this is the Friday, this is the after hour session right now. So if you're a buyer, you do not want to see this low get taken out. This low here, yesterday's low. So 70.55. You do not want to see that get taken out because then that puts these pivots in play. The good news is that you're trading above the weekly open and the monthly open, quarterly open. So right now the 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 bias and the trend is to the upside. But so you do not want to see those those sellers break below those because then that means they're taking control. Okay. Um, but to be honest, it's it's hard to see what's going to happen tomorrow uh, because XOP, N O O I H, they all had outside bars today. So they all, they all had outside bars. So they at one point, you know, they they if we take a look at, a, at the hourly chart here, at one point here, it opened the day right here. So this is the uh, the day right here. Excuse me. It opens the day. It goes green and then actually goes red right away. So one point here, it does an inside outside inside bar. It breaks to the downside, then goes to the upside. 
but then comes back down again, rushing down and taking out all these lows and stops. So it's a pretty aggressive trade to the downside, and I'm sure it stopped out a lot of people who are who are long that thing on a short-term entry. And so now you have an outside bar in XOP, outside bar on OIH. So the question is, what's the next bar? Does it go outside bar and down? Does it go inside bar for tomorrow on the daily? Or do we see an, you know, it possibly taking out the top end of this range? So that's what we need to be looking for is, can it break down below yesterday's low and stay below this low? Or does it come back into the range again? Or does it simply sit inside the range and make an inside day, thereby setting up something very interesting, perhaps on, on Monday? Or does it break higher and if it doesn't break higher, does it break higher and then come back in again, thereby setting, again, another potential reversal to the downside? So, you know, those those are your different scenarios that are that are in play there, but nothing to take action on right now just because you know, you have an outside bar. It's not enough just to have an outside bar to short or to, or to go long. You're going to have to see and wait what that next bar is going to be to get the confirmation. Okay. Now, just to... Um, close off a couple of things you know we had some stocks just making all-time highs today and this is the real uh, counterbalance to some of these equities uh, these indices that looked kind of ugly today you know especially the Dow there where it looked like it was gonna break down it came very very close to breaking down before at the end of the day uh, they bought it um, and I'll just show you a really nice reversal on the Dow I happen to take the reversal on the spy but the reversal setup was on all of them all the indices for the most part here, I'll zoom into the to the uh, to the Dow here, and there's your setup right there. So in the Dow, going into 230, we have that outside bar and inside breaks to the downside. Okay, so there's your outside inside bar break to the downside. Now those people who got short here thought they were going to make a bunch of money because it was getting really close to breaking that weekly low we talked about already. But the buyers defended, right? This is basically the low, right? The low is 260.58. The buyer stepped in right there. You can see the volume that steps in right here on this bar. They defended that. And then immediately that's an inside bar reversal because once the top of the high of this inside bar gets taken out, I'll just draw it in here then these pivots are in play. So they took it out here, and then for the rest of the day, it rallies. It goes up close to 6R from your entry had you got in right there. All right, so that's your inside bar reversal, and it happened on all the indices. So that was the, the nice thing about that, that trade is that it was a confluence of, of indices you could have taken it on. I happened to take that on the SPY, which had the same similar pattern. It just didn't have the same kind of juice that, oh, excuse me, didn't have the same kind of juice that, that the Dow had um, comparatively. Okay, so draw on the same entry there. Okay, so the interesting counterpoint is that you had names like Shop hitting all-time highs. So even though we had some weakness in the equity markets, names like Shop were going to all-time highs today. Look at the strength of uh, of Shop. Right, so this was certainly a, a really good name to to, to be holding on to and you can see this past rally here it's, it's just gone basically straight up since the uh, since the, the fifth once it bottomed out here right it just gone straight up and he had, he had a number of good entry signals to get in on, on that one even the tech names uh, excuse me um, technology names and, and semiconductor names like Xilinx been very very strong today didn't didn't make an uh, did not make a new high but yesterday it created an all-time high and today was consolidation day so nothing showing weakness yet in this chart okay so tomorrow let's uh, wait and see what happens the key thing is to be um, responsive and adaptable try not to be, have, have too many biases um, but also be respectful of the bigger trends the bigger trend is up so yes you want to be flexible but also you want to be biased to the upside because right now that's the the bigger picture so don't try to outthink things and get too clever and look for look for shorts in fact again you want to be leaning long for the most part if uh, if you're in doubt okay have a good trading day on Friday 
and happy trading.